scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Thank you. I sat back there just watching the various ministrations and I said, my God, these people are so gifted. That evangelist man, I don't know who you are, but you really are very, very gifted. I think he's, he's, oh, that's him there. I was laughing. I said, I had to call myself and say, Mr. Man, you'll be preaching shortly. So be in the spirit. Thank you. It's, it's an amazing thing to have people who love God and are very gifted. And when we find these kinds of people, it is important that we encourage them and give them a place. Hallelujah. The last thing I want to talk about and then we'll sit down is when I was given a copy of this magazine, I very quickly my eyes went to the motto here and it struck me so hard. It's written here, the Foursquare Gospel Church in Nigeria, the National Youth Ministry. And then it says, raising Christ-centered champions circumspectly very brilliant that means that there is intention there is intention it is very exact that god is through the youth ministry preserving the destiny of the four square gospel church and i think this deserves a round of applause sincerely hallelujah are we ready for the word tonight It'll be now let me plead for two things number one um, if we are silent then we will hear and then number two let's participate um, we'll be here only for a few minutes I understand we've been here for a while and I don't intend to keep you longer than necessary praise the Lord let's hold hands together and pray do you like prayer a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. Hold your hands and just lift your voice in one minute. Let's ask the Lord to speak to us this night. Thank you, Jesus. Let him hear you pray. Let him hear you cry. challenge our destinies in the name of Jesus set us on fire tonight in the name of Jesus I pray that the sick will be healed I pray that the oppressed will be delivered I pray that you will raise mighty men out of this meeting in Jesus name I pray 
Please be seated. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you again. The Lord placed it in my heart tonight to challenge us. I came here to really inspire someone and to challenge us. Our world today is full of many men, women, young people without a sense of vision, without a sense of direction, and without a sense of destiny. It used to be very old and elderly people who would have diseases like high blood pressure and would even think of committing suicide but right now the rate of suicide among young people and the rate of diseases like high blood pressure is on the increase and it only goes to show that something is wrong the average young man seems to be discouraged about life discouraged about god discourage about destiny and um, I think it is very very important that at platforms like this that we have an opportunity to hear God speak to us and speak to our destinies and so tonight I want to share very briefly on the topic I titled the price for uncommon impact Please write it down. The price for uncommon impact. What is responsible for the mighty impact that a handful of people make in their generation? What is responsible for certain names today that have become keys? You mentioned that name a door can open for you what is responsible for the names that have etched themselves in the archives of history when we read through scripture we find names everyone please say names would you shout it one more time say names yes thank you there are names that never made it in the Bible but were there when Jesus walked the earth there are names that never made it in our history books, but they were alive when history was being made. There are names that we do not know, yet they existed. So what is the secret and what is the price? If you pay attention to that which I teach you tonight, it's impossible for your generation to ignore you. Are we together? Now, the challenge many times is that we claim influence. We claim impact. We claim a life of purpose and a life of destiny. But we do not understand the methodologies, the prescribed pathway that can take a man from a life of mediocrity and failure and pain to a life where you become the face of God to a generation. What I am teaching you is very powerful. Please hear me. Every generation needs a face that represents the face of God to them. Every generation needs a voice that represents the voice of God to them. Every generation needs men that represent pillars that guide the values of that society. And when a generation loses men and women that represent God, that generation is in trouble. Respectfully so, in the generation of our parents, we have great people like the founders and the leaders of this great assembly for square. I had the privilege, permit me to just use that example, to pass through the redemption camp before coming and... I had the honor of 
being guided to a tour around the Gio's house and I had the privilege to pray on his bed pray in his prayer room before coming right here and I began to talk to myself and I said that was not the only man born in his days so what happened to the rest it's a terrible thing to watch television and watch your future but you are not there you watch other people you aspired like them we will get there oh it's a bright future and never have the opportunity to go there you know years ago i used to have a lot of colleagues and friends wonderful people who aspired for a great destiny some of them today are in prisons truthfully speaking some of them are alive but not living some of them are scattered around wallowing in mediocrity and so i came tonight with a passion to truly show you a pathway by the spirit of god within a few minutes and then to also pray that god will grant knowledge and then grant you the grace that can shift you from where you are to the place of destiny listen to me there are many of you under the sound of my voice you are the prayer of your mother you are the prayer of your father prophecy brought you not desire there was a man sent from God sent from God are we together the Bible says his name was John and that the same came for a witness to bear the witness to the truth that through him all men might be saved one day my mother told me a little story on how I arrived here I've said it here that my grandfather was the founding father of one of the great denominations in the north and so I come from a lineage of missionaries and then when that man got old and he was about to die my mother prayed a prayer I'm saying this to inspire you and she said Lord is this how this grace will die from this family line and she said I donate my womb either use my child or use any of my brother but let this grace continue and she thought God did not answer until I came many of your loved ones thought God did not answer the prayer that they prayed but you are that answer seated now the answer to the pain the answer to the fasting when they fasted and prayed God sent you as an answer and please pay attention to what I share with you now because it will bless you I made up my mind years ago that I will become the face of God to my generation it was not something that just happened it was not something that was a product of luck it was not something that was a product of um, circumstance it was with intention that was why when I saw this, it touched me. Circumspectly, with intention. Everybody by God, from God and through God has a destiny. Please say, I have a destiny. I'm being very simple tonight for a reason. My intention is for us to get something that can inspire us all through this conference. Say one more time, I have a destiny. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 29 and the 11 verse, I'll quote it for time. It says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace or good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end say expected end that means that in the mind of God before you came through the womb of time there was an expected end please understand this number two in the dealings of God with men he never sends a man without a destiny there is no man sent by God there is no man under the sound of my voice who does not have a destiny an allocation a role to play in God's universal agenda 
Your destiny is a representation of not only your assignment, but the role you have to play in God's universal agenda. The role. The agenda of God is fragmented into assignments and roles. And we have been assigned. Jesus said in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7, Apostle Paul was making a quotation that I believe was in reference to the Messiah, the Christ. He says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. When you read Luke chapter 4, one time Jesus comes and stands in the temple and the Bible says it was given to him the scroll of Esaias and then he begins to read about his destiny. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, he said, for he has anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to deliver the oppressed, and then to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. The Bible says he closed the scripture and said, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your eyes. I have come as a fulfillment. Have you found yourself here? Have you opened the Bible one day and saw something written and you know this is me? Not prophetically, literally. This is my space in destiny. I found it. Many continue to live aimless lives. Governed by university. Then governed by NYSC. Then governed by a job somewhere if they find or a business. Then governed by marriage. Then governed by parenting. Then governed by pain and misery. Then governed by old age. Then finally, miserably ending in death. That cannot be God's desire. An intelligent creature should not live like that. And an intelligent creator should not be that dull to allow a man come and walk the surface of the earth with this kind of confusion. Lo, I come as it is written of me to do thy will. One day I found a scripture for my life and my destiny. Tears came out of my eyes and I said, this is it. I have found not the reason for living, but what you can die for. Please listen very carefully. God is speaking to your heart and inspiring and challenging you. Otherwise, there is a generation of visionless people that will arise. And the Bible says without vision. The people cast off restraint. The key to discipline is vision. The key to focus is vision. And when you find out that your life is going haywire, part of the reason may be that you have not found something that can commit you for life. Now, I want to just write this down. Success, generally speaking, can only be referenced on five platforms. There are only five biblical platforms. That means when a man says, I am successful, it's not generic. There are only five areas or six or maximum seven, I would say. Number one, God's idea of success is first measured in the quality of your spiritual health. The first index to measure true biblical success is the quality of your spiritual health. That means in God's mind, if your spiritual life goes down and you are not rich unto God like scripture will say, then it does not matter what you are able to acquire in time. The Bible weighs you very small. Everybody please shout spiritual health. And I'm arranging success for you based on the order of priority. God cannot be somewhere in the equation of your life. The formula is in the beginning, God. Say it after me. In the beginning. In the beginning of anything, God. In the beginning of my success, God. 
in the beginning of my academics god in the beginning of my marriage in the beginning of my parenting in the beginning of my financial journey in the beginning of my career he has to be alpha alpha the starter in the beginning of my giving god in the beginning of my spending god in the beginning of my day god that scripture is very instructive it says in the beginning god it's governed my life god is not only interested in being part of your life he's interested in being the starter the priority are we together so your spiritual health is the first index that measures true success number two very quickly the second measure of success is your degree of mental transformation the second true measure of success in that order is the degree of mental transformation the degree to which your mind has become the mind of Christ and the degree to which you have been enlightened let's shout that word say enlightened one more time say enlightened it comes from the word light it means illumination are we together please look up you rise in life only limit of light illumination and development of their minds number two the relationships that they have at that enlightened level number three the graces that operate on their life this is what separates any two people you literally can reproduce another person into another person if you provide these three platforms the requisite level of information the relationships that connect that person at that enlightened version of him and then the grace that comes upon them the difference between you and any man of God or any great leader that you admire is the information. There is a body of knowledge that they have that you do not have. Knowledge is powerful. Spiritual illumination is powerful. Listen to me. Listen to me. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, I hope you are learning tonight. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, the assignment of the Holy Spirit, listen, is not just to make you a Christian or a preacher. No, no, no. Being a preacher is the geography of your assignment. The Holy Spirit's assignment, when you are saved, when he comes into your life, his assignment is not just to make you a prayer warrior. His assignment is not just to make you anointed to heal the sick. No. His assignment is to begin to transit you until you become the portrait of the Christ. Are we together now? Transformation. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, when you read from verse 1 and 2, it says, I beseech thee, brethren. Let me quote it because of time. I beseech thee, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto God he says holy and acceptable and he calls it your reasonable act of worship then verse 2 says do not be conformed to this age is the Greek word aeon it means the thinking pattern the mindset the belief system that is associated with a territory do not conform to it but then he says be ye transformed how by the renewing of your mind and then he says that transformation will help you now to be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God this is scripture Philippians chapter 2 Paul was teaching the church in Philippi and verse 5 he began to teach and he said let this mind be in you permit it the word let there means permit allow this construction Jesus was not jesus on earth just because he was the son of god he was a man in the flesh but he grew through transformation at age 12 when his colleagues and contemporaries were loitering around the bible says jesus was in the temple is that correct he was learning he was building listen 
aside from your spiritual growth your next assignment is not to look for money your next assignment is not to look for fame your next assignment is to be able to grow into the version of you that your future is looking for you see success is not what we look for success is what is attracted by who we are becoming it's a mistake that many people continue to make maybe i will use the choir because of time can i have six or seven gentlemen just run quickly and come please please let's celebrate them as they come quickly just come and i want to do an illustration here thank you come just stand four of you stand here four of you stand here all of you watch this i want to teach you something that i don't want you to forget for the rest of your life oh they are bending let's let's shift here so that um the ministers can see come with me gentlemen stand four of you facing me four of you face me here you understand okay i thought they were okay no problem now watch this no 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 okay three yes watch this just space yourself now i want to be successful watch me call this guy a car call this guy fame call this guy money are we together call this guy um a good home call this guy an estate or whatever it is that you want and call this guy whatever else you want now this is the mistake that many people make when you start your journey in life watch this these are the things that society defines as success and there are elements of success in them but the mistake we make is that we grow spiritually so we spend time with god but when it has to do with succeeding in life we begin to chase these things one by one that labor is a cost are we together please learn this this is a deliverance already for someone everything you are looking for is also looking for you but not this version of you listen everything you are looking for is looking for you it continues to come to your destiny and does not find you because the version it is looking for is not yet there please understand the influence you are looking for is already looking for you but every time it comes to your future it does not see you there because this version cannot get that result and if you force yourself to get that result it's like holding a rubber ring it must go back it will go back as many things listen if you listen to what i teach you tonight and you learn it there is no power in existence that will stop you from rising to a great destiny understand what i teach you so here's what we try to do i stay at this unenlightened level but i want the result of this level so I try to force my way to it. And when I get it, the result rejects me. Because it was designed by God to honor a particular version of me. So there is a version of enlightenment that attracts certain levels of results. This is a tragedy of entering a realm that you have not entered through transformation. Any realm you do not enter through transformation is not yet your own. It will leave you it will leave you as circumstances it will leave you as a failed business it will leave you as someone scamming you that's just the the caricature the real reason why it left you was that you were not there when you acquire anything that your mind has not had yet your destiny will interpret it as an error and it will make sure it leaves you when it leaves you your destiny says now you are fine that means true success is not pursued god already saved us the labor of looking for things when you labor to get things it is impossible to give god the glory now this is how success comes are, are we still together remember i'm teaching you the five platforms that express success you won't believe that this is not even my message tonight i just came with a burden but if we stop here tonight i believe you have something number one i said your spiritual growth number two i'm talking of your mental transformation are we together now watch this this is the ladder of mental growth 
that means as i am transformed to look like christ but not only to look like christ in terms of bible knowledge but there is a particular information that makes leaders there is a particular information that makes wealthy people there is a particular information that makes churches work there is a particular information that makes a good husband and a wife that body of knowledge are located for specific results as you acquire them watch what happens all of you for every step i take forward you two move forward to me are we together when i go back you go now watch this while i am in my small room i want god tells me son i will take you all over the world in this example and that me may be you now are we together now the secret is not to go and look for fame say respect me i'm blessed i'm anointed no when i grow here watch this as i'm growing watch what is happening to my destiny i'm praying shakata batata i must get there are you seeing that i'm colliding with that reality when i backslide and i go back this is what i do to my destiny watch this it is true so when god says son don't worry don't go and lie down on any jeep trying to claim anything that's unnecessary burden just grow it is already provided for a particular version of you there is a version of you that that jeep must come to without prayer the problem is not remaining where you are I'm praying for things. The problem is goal growing. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. And Jesus grew. Jesus grew. There was a version of him that the donkey you spoke about would not come to. The donkey was not coming to a baby in a manger. The donkey was coming to one filled with the Holy Spirit and was a world changer. There are some results you are praying for that the hindrance is God, not Satan. God is the one who created this loss. He will never let it come to you. That version of you cannot have it. Please hear what I teach you and deliver yourself from mediocrity forever. Every great man will tell you that everything he was looking for was looking for him. But he did not find him, not this version of him. Canaan was looking for Israel, but not disobedient Israel, not rebellious Israel. There was, there was a version of Israel. There was a name already in heaven for Jesus, but not the uncrucified Jesus. When he died and rose again, the Bible says, Therefore God had so highly exalted him, and as a result of that death, he gave him a name, an office. So watch this. Instead of looking for cars, instead of leaving God to look for fame, this is what I do. As I study the word, and as I educate my mind, as I allow myself to be mentored, you may laugh at me when you pass with your car, but watch what my destiny is doing. I don't have the luxury of picking what I need one by one. So I draw them in mass through transformation. This is what will happen. A day will come. I will push them and they will not go. You will steal them and they will come back. Because this version of you does not allow that you are without those things. Listen, there is a version of you that will never happen without you being a millionaire whether you like money or not it's impossible once you are transformed to that version the the law that god created is that that level of transformation must have the blessing that is to that degree i save you the stress and the, and the mundane pursuits that people continue to move around they do every other thing but transform their minds. Listen, you rise up by sitting down. You go out by remaining in. You are known when you stay in the secret place. Is God speaking to someone tonight? Please go back again now please our time is gone 
let me have one person seated in front come one gentleman and one lady <laughs> gentlemen there are, there are already two of you one of you is, it's not impartation it's just an example come and the lady come <laughs> i know he thinks that um it's an come my dear come now two of you come stand here two of you are four square students watch this now i can be here in destiny and laugh at these ones you will look at my result at this level and hate where you are not knowing you can be there too it's a road for everybody to follow the difference between me and you is the growth that has happened now it's impossible to want what i have at this level right there are, are you seeing where the mistake is now at this level you will pray for favor for one year to get one testimony at this level if i don't have favor in one week i know it's an attack are you seeing that now there is a level you get to in six hours if no favor comes it's an attack that level does not allow you to wait that far without favor ah, god of heaven please make sure you understand what i'm saying now watch this this is what the devil does he will make you to be discouraged because of how far and you will be watching the great men and women of god come close to me now if you see me this is me your mentor are you seeing my my reality this is where i'm standing while i'm teaching you so if all you look at is my results you will be in trouble because you will see the protocol you don't know that growth is what brought me here now the real thing you should follow is not the results is follow what is transiting you to that realm so every time you come to church watch what is happening take one step and come carefully watch this one sunday one student congress 2016 2017 now you are not seeing it you know when you are traveling for 95 percent of the journey you don't see where you are going and then suddenly within minutes welcome to lagos you are there you are in ibadan yet you are not in lagos and you want to abort 12 hours of laborious journey simply because your eyes has not seen one signboard whereas you are close all that joseph knew he was only 12 hours away from the throne the last night he slept this is it but the devil will tell this young precious lady to forget about transformation and route another way of getting success hold her hand and this lady will have somebody who is giving her money all the time and she believes she's rich let me tell you what the laws of god not a demonic attack will do a situation must be created to return this girl back to where she really belongs this is why many people for many years keep cheating malpractice of destiny and even after 30 years they return back to where they really were it's not always an attack it is that they did not follow the path well preachers businessmen hi please get what i'm teaching you this is something that god taught me anything that i don't grow into i run away from it's a waste of time if you clap for me and it did not come by growth then i know that you have only clapped for me for the last time why taste something and return back to pain when it can become your realm listen come the donkey spoke once and never spoke again because it was not his realm are we together handkerchiefs and aprons laid hands once and they didn't do it again why should i come into a realm where i just prophesied one night and it was powerful but then there was no foundation of growth that could keep me in that realm one day i preached a powerful message by mistake 
and everybody said this is powerful and for the next five years i cannot preach any message that matches it again one day i just healed somebody by mistake and they say wow this is powerful one day as a gospel artist i write one song by mistake that lifts me and for the next five years i remain down because no other song could rise the problem is not an attack is growth please learn this my precious people so that you know that every time invested in the presence of god invested in a platform of mentorship like this is kindness to your destiny are we together now you are sitting quietly now someone may be a businessman and he may feel bad leaving his business to attend a program like this because he's going to miss five hundred thousand. how much is that compared to the needs of your destiny you are here but god wants to push you here and jesus grew it's a scary statement even the word grew the word grew now please step back watch this now let me show you what is happening the holy spirit hold your hands together together i come from a background where nobody knows me god will you lift me yes my son how will it happen not by trying to fake your life it may take time but move with the dignity of honor oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever love you oh god you are my god and i will ever follow listen and i will seek you in the morning and i have learned to walk in your ways for step by step you lead me and i will follow you all of my days step by step you lead us ah. step by step out of pain step by step out of shame step by step out of mediocrity your mother did not go to school i know but take your mind to the school of destiny and come out of pain watch this watch this come back again my my dear people let me tell you how god designed this system am i are you learning something this night may you never forget what i'm teaching you this night listen to me the law of destiny as designed by god is that your future is real but the first person to get to your future is your mind your mind comes to verify whether it's real when your mind gets there it will come and say body follow me is real your mind will come and take your body there anywhere your mind does not get to if your body tries to get there the authorized escort to your body is your mind the ministry you are claiming to have now has your mind gone with the holy spirit to that place you are ceo only on paper is your mind a ceo you are a man of god only because of the paraphernalia of ministry that is around you years ago i used to know these great guys on campus these people would never listen and follow the law of process i mean they wanted ministry to work now they wanted tv ministry they wanted cars and you know sometimes we confuse these things with faith faith is not foolishness there are many things that we call faith respectfully speaking that is only lost looking for expression it is not faith because if you know god you will know that there are things to not pray for growth they were already answered in growth 
a little baby is born with a womb is that true but that version of that baby cannot carry a child but the womb is there a little boy is born with capacity to have children but not that version of him the child does not grow and say body make sure you get to a point where my wife can take it no it's an unnecessary prayer god's intelligence already provided that as you keep growing you get to a point even without being aware that you had gotten to the capacity that will make that happen that's why when you get there and it does not happen you know it's an attack because you know that it should happen effortlessly if your little two-year-old daughter comes to meet you and say mommy why am i not pregnant you see that that very statement tells you her age isn't it it verifies that she's a child but when a woman who is 25 30 and has been married and there's no child then you know a miracle is required because that one is the finger of satan please listen to me don't say i graduated 20 years ago there's no job now don't feel offended with what i'm telling you i came to stretch a bit tonight we'll pray you have a certificate that is 20 years old but how old is your mind are we together your mind is only attracting to your life what reflects its level when i found this out my life changed i stopped looking for things i grow into things the, any dimension that i have to struggle to enter is proof that i'm not yet there you see one of any of our uncles here and the men of god if you go to the street now look at this and, and i want to say it with all humility i don't mean to boast please understand this if our uncle here goes outside now and you see him buying pure water on the street just one pure water do you know what you will do the law of his growth will force you to say no sir let me buy you table water imagine seeing your general overseer trying to buy a plate of food in a restaurant his level of growth does not allow for that reality in his life again it has nothing to do with humility no the law will force someone to say that can i have the privilege you call it privilege remember before it was a it was a miracle at this level eating three times a day was a miracle but not at this level so miracles are relative what you are praying for is what someone is is saying oh god this is too much it is growth listen to me every car you have seen when you saw it it saw you too it passed because it's not your own yet the office you will later walk in saw you when you saw it but it's not looking for that version of you when you watch television and you saw certain leaders standing and you imagine you standing you were not wrong but not that version of you as a man of god god showed you where you will go in the dream but it has not come physically because your mind has not arrived there anywhere you go by the spirit with your mind your body must get there there is no tribal sentiment there is no political affiliation there is no prejudice there is no whatever it is please comfort yourself everything you see today don't be under pressure if at this level you are still soaking gary it's not proof that your faith is not working it is the law of process do it with honor and dignity while your body is eating gary let your mind be eating with kings while you are in one room let your mind be building the estate while your body is teaching five members let your mind be building the campground will your mind build a campground your body will not enter while you are in hundred level just wondering and say oh this course don't worry let your mind be collecting the phd for you your mind is attending a convocation ceremony of a doctor whereas you are here wondering will i pass this course 
For step by step you lead me And I will follow you all of my days Do you know the purpose of dreams and visions? The purpose of dreams and visions is not just to prove you are prophetic Dreams and visions are spiritual strategies Where the Holy Spirit takes your mind to your destiny So that you will see it and returns you back and then your body follows some of you seated here right now you've seen yourself on this stage is that true you've seen yourself ministering you got up and you casted it don't cast it it's not a lie but not this version of you the version of you now will not preach on this stage except you are acting drama but in reality it may not preach here it doesn't mean you are not called so while you stay in the secret place shakata kabakata while you are studying and fasting nobody is seeing you but you are coming closer to the pulpit a day will come the justice of god will fish you out of a thousand people it is true it's unnecessary to call the world to see you a system has been designed to make those who are ready seen to be seen this is it this is what God taught me many years ago. I would stay and study my Bible and see visions of the nations. And I said, Lord, I believe you. I believe you. My background notwithstanding. The limitations notwithstanding. Do you know I travel today to places and sometimes when I stand there, I begin to, I almost fight tears because I saw those places years ago but that version of me as born again as it was could not come there please my precious people hear what i teach you and it will explain why many people are not moving forward because our minds froze and it's only our bodies that are moving the healer you saw is real grow into it the one feeding nations you saw is real grow into it hear me my dear sister the woman of god that you saw in your dream you saw the wives of many jews in this nation and you saw yourself in their midst it's not a lie it's a call of destiny but that version of you will never sit down with the great A day came I had a dream many years ago there were ministers gathered together and I was on stage eating I no, I was somewhere scattered and Papa Ia Deboye looked at me and spotted me he said come and when I was coming people were frowning what is this small boy coming to do Baba is calling what should this boy be doing and then when I got there he was eating on the stage he said kneel down and eat i said no i can't i can't do this i mean i was well trained ah i would not try this he said i'm the one who is telling you eat imagine that i got up and went to redemption camp and i say i'm a man of god i have a track record of sick bodies being healed and all of that and uh, sir i saw you in the dream and because of that where is your dining table how stupid the Spirit of God took my mind there to say, if you walk with me, this will be your destiny. Many people have seen things in their dreams and died and never got there because their minds remained in their yesterday. Even if your body goes to tomorrow, is where your mind is that is really where you are. If you are in tomorrow and your mind is in yesterday, you are in yesterday. Lay hands on your head in one minute and for the next one minute pray in tongues and say in the name of Jesus my understanding move forward. My knowledge of God, my knowledge of life, my knowledge of destiny. Is someone praying? Pray! That man of God that I saw in my visions is the Holy Spirit taking me to destiny. I will get there. That woman of the Spirit that I saw, that healing evangelist that I saw, now I believe, now I know. That 
like worshiper that I saw taking the songs of the spirit to the nations you may despise this version of me but there is a version of me that creation cannot ignore hallelujah praise the Lord sit down thank you gentlemen God bless you do you understand what I just taught you so number one to measure success your spiritual health number two your level of transformation I am passionate about knowledge not random knowledge not every knowledge you must before you receive knowledge find out what allocation is given to it in terms of the problems it must solve in your destiny there are many spiritual information that are useless to the saints it is pride and carnality that continues to drive people into a body of knowledge that has no applicability to their lives and destiny just because an information is scarce or spiritual or true does not mean it is needed when you are a student and you are studying medicine, you may never visit the faculty of arts for anything. Correct? Now, that does not mean the body of knowledge there is wrong. It means as far as the course you are pursuing is concerned, knowledge there is unnecessary. If you go every day to take lectures, for instance, in theater arts, it's wonderful if you are an artist. But if you are a doctor, it, it does not matter. So we have random accumulating of spiritual knowledge. We just go online and any topic. We have so many things. And that vacillation of knowledge puffs us up to mean that because we have several knowledge, we are wise. But our results show we are not. We must trust God for guided knowledge. The Bible says when he, the spirit of truth, is come, Jesus speaking, he said he will guide you. Truth is something that you must get with guidance. Number three, let me hurry up. I guess I'll preach my tonight's message tomorrow. The third platform to measure success is your health and your physical well-being. It looks very simple, but please pay attention. A body has thou prepared for me, not just a spirit, a body. This body must be prepared to impact a generation. A body has thou prepared. The church is not called the spirit of Christ. The church is called the body of Christ. Satan knew the value of bodies. Even when Moses died, he wanted his body. Bodies are important. Your body is your only legal access to operate in this realm. If you do not have a body or if you lose your body, it's more than just being healthy. You have lost your right to function within this domain that's the reason why satan exits men prematurely by doing something to their body when you have an accident god forbid and please i'm not getting you emotional but when you have an accident there is a way that accident can deteriorate your body your spirit will no longer stay there and it will have to leave is that true there is a way that your health will break down to a point that your spirit will have to leave. So the spirit does not just stay in the body generically. There is a, a threshold level of health that can allow it to stay there. So when you say, I shall not die but leave, that means you are saying God does not, do, uh, I mean, um, your word says that I shall not die but leave and this body needs to be preserved. When Jesus spoke about worry and stress, he knew what he was saying. It was a system of preserving your body so that you will last. Brothers and sisters, hear me. If I died this morning, I will not be here now. Are you aware that you need to be alive to make an impact? And that to be alive is not just a spiritual issue alone. Your body, it is very important. A body has thou prepared for me. You must commit yourself to being healthy the same way you are committing yourself to being spiritual. It's a commitment you must trust God to make. Say amen. Number four, the fourth platform to measure success is in the area of finances. 
you're excelling financially. Every time I come around the West, I marvel at the spirit of faith and the grace for territory that is upon this region. When I came in here, I've been here a few times, but it never, it never ceases to dumbfound me. You don't have these kinds of facilities to this degree in the north like that. To have one church, one ministry, own estate, own properties. Let me tell you, you've heard me say that the name of God is heavy. It takes resources to lift it up. The name of Jesus is extremely heavy. It takes resources to lift it up. As we worship you, let all the world come and see how the mercy we receive from you can set them free let all the nations come and see but we have to lift up that name whoever tells you to ignore your finances in destiny is the one that has destroyed your life listen being successful financially is not an issue of being rich it's an issue of redeeming time Money has nothing to do. It's not the issue of prosperity for the ego. The Bible commands us to redeem time. And one of the ways we redeem time is to have the resources to minimize wastage. Poverty is not about lack of money. It's about the servitude of your time. The highest thing you have in your life is time. Whatever can help you redeem time is an advantage. Listen to me. I will continue to preach this. The only reason why Israel goes to Egypt is hunger. Say hunger. Hunger is the only thing that takes Israel to Egypt. Let me show you a scripture. Never forget it. Genesis 42. Is it projected up here? I'm not sure it is. I just wanted to know if they are... Okay. If it will be projected, I want us to see it if you can... Really see. Genesis chapter 42. We'll read the first two verses. Otherwise, you just look at your Bible. The Bible talks about Jacob. If you can see it, read it with me. One to read. Now, when Jacob saw that there was what? Everybody say corn in Egypt. There was corn. But the problem was the location. That's not the place to be in. But there's corn there. Then the Bible says, Jacob said unto his sons, Why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. Verse 2 now. And he said, Behold, uh -huh, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. A prophet without corn will still die. Jacob was a prophet, but he said, now we are hungry, we need corn. And Satan programmed the location of corn to be where? Egypt. So you may stand and know God and love God. You may be a prayer warrior until there is a need for your son's school fees. That hunger will start taking you from the secret place to Egypt. Believers must be empowered, but... They must be empowered properly. When people understand that this subject of wealth has nothing to do with just being rich to prove to everybody that I'm poor, that's too small a reason for it. It is a strategy for time redemption. The Bible says, the rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. It took wealth to make this happen today. Jesus is being glorified in this place, not only on the wings of faith, but on the wings of resources. We are able to amplify this voice to you and to the nations today. When God blesses you, it takes away the temptation of, of the funny things that people do around the pulpit. Is it not when you are hungry that you would think of cheating someone on, on his food? Listen to me. God wants you to be wealthy. 
but the key is that you prosper even as your soul prospers that's what satan does not want you will have to exchange your soul so he said what shall it profit a man profit he's speaking business now if he gains the whole world and what loses his soul you know you are prospering by your world when your soul is dying while your wealth is growing when you meet god he will cause both your soul and your wealth to grow if your soul is growing and your wealth is not growing the problem is ignorance if your wealth is growing and your soul is not growing the problem is fraternity with this age but if your soul is growing and your wealth is growing it's proof that god is the one who is lifting you the second reason why you need wealth in your life if i would say very quickly is because the bible makes a very interesting statement that god revealed to me recently am i wasting your time jesus please hear me if you're a minister of the gospel please hear me because this is the strategy the devil wants to use and embarrass people these days notice that jesus went about preaching the moment jesus started preaching those who came to him were tax collectors they came to disgrace him and they said you are preaching and you are not paying tax in other words you are not leaving your word they knew that they would not find him with women they would not find him with anything they came with the issue of resources and jesus said paraphrasing what is this embarrassment for now he said well anyway go to the fish catch that fish remove coin from it and when you remove coin from it give the man and let him go and then he says blessed are the peacemakers do you know what is the reward of a peacemaker he says they shall what watch this peace i give you jesus is speaking my peace i give not as the world gives do you know how he gives us peace he showed us the formula give to caesar what belongs to caesar and give to god what belongs to god so when you hold a bible and you are serving god caesar will come for his coins hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.